Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and today I'm sharing a video to go along with the This Calls for Confetti Summer Shaker Cards Giveaway Hop that's happening now on Instagram through July 14th of 2022. Several crafters are sharing shaker cards that they created with a summer theme using the awesome confetti mixes from This Calls for Confetti. I'm sharing three summer fruit themed cards that show how you can use your cutting dies in new ways and think outside the box. So can you guess what shape I used to create this lemon shaker? What about this strawberry? I hope after watching my video today, you'll be inspired to look at your cutting dies to see if you can get other possible uses out of them by using them for different shapes. Before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. These are some of the confetti and sequin mixes that I have received from this cause for confetti. I'll have the names listed at the top of the screen. I just love all of the bling and I absolutely love making shaker cards so I'm really excited to be a part of this hop. I know it's kind of hard to see what some of these look like on the video but I will zoom in on the ones that I use for my shaker cards while I show how to make the cards here in a bit. Now since this is a giveaway hop you can have a chance to win a $25 gift certificate to this cause for confetti if you live in the United States. All of the information is in my post over on Instagram. So if you haven't hopped along yet, I hope you'll click on the link in the description box and that will take you directly to my post and you can find out how to enter. I use this 6x6 six six paper pad called Squeeze the Day. It's by Bella Boulevard. This lemon pattern the watermelon pattern and then the strawberry pattern plus that teal that matches that dark pink pattern and then I'm also using some 12 by 12 sheets from this same collection. So let's start with the lemon card. I used sketch number 14 from my latest quarterly card challenge for the layout of this card. Now I recently shared a video where I made a bunch of ocean themed shaker cards using challenge 7 and this Ocean Friends kit here. And while I was looking at the shapes in this kit, I thought it would be easy to use this shape here as a lemon. It's meant to create a turtle shell, but the kit comes with the shaped foam pieces and cut acetate. So I went ahead and cut up all my papers to match the measurements on the sketch. And I used some yellow cardstock to cut out the lemon and some of that green pattern paper to cut out some leaves using some leaf dies from my stash. And then for the strip in the center that I'm using for my sentiment, I used another one of the sheets from the pattern paper pad that has strips of different fruit designs. And this one says, life is short, squeeze all you can out of it. And I just love that saying. Now this is an A2 size card. So that yellow, yellow layer will cover the entire front of the card base, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I've glued down all of the pieces using some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. I removed the adhesive backing from the foam shape and then applied the inner yellow piece of the lemon. And now it's time to add the confetti mix. This is the squeeze the day mix. Let me zoom in here so you can see it a little better. It has two different citrus size shapes in there along with some yellow, white, lime green, clear, light aqua and blue sequins and bits in there. And I think it matches this lemon pattern paper really well. So I'm just picking out a few of each type to put in this little lemon shaker. Next, I need to apply the shaped acetate piece to keep the bits inside. And to do this, I just removed that top adhesive backing from the foam piece. And then I glued the shaped outline piece on top of the acetate. Now you want to be really careful with the amount of liquid, liquid glue that you use here. You don't want to use too much or it could seep out and cloud up the acetate. So next I'm attaching the leaves, one on top of the raised shaker piece and the other just underneath the tip directly on the card. And this finishes off card number one. For card number two, I'm using card sketch 10 from my challenge seven for the layout. I've cut out a scalloped circle from the green pattern paper that I'm also using for my bottom layer. I did that to help save on supplies. And this piece measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I'll be adding the dark pink strawberry seed printed paper on top of that for the next layer. And this measures four by five and a quarter. Originally, I was going to use the strawberry print that's on the back, but it was just too busy once I added the teal strips on top. So I just opted to go with the dark pink. It's much easier to use a T ruler to help line up the pieces here and make sure that they're straight. But I have misplaced my T 
tea ruler somewhere in my disaster of a craft room. So now on this sketch, it shows a little embellishment in the bottom right hand corner of that scallop circle. So I decided to use one of the cut aparts in the paper pad. And it's pretty small, but I used the stitch circle die to cut out the little strawberry and the sentiment that says love you bunches. And then I use the next size circle die to layer this up with some of that same teal paper that I used for my strips. And so now that I have all of that down, it's time to work on the shaker part. To make the strawberry, I'm using the balloon shaped shaker dies and shaker pouches from MFT Stamps. If you hadn't figured out what shape I used yet. I'm just going to cut off that little bottom piece of the balloon. This shaker is a little different than the last one. Instead of foam shapes, the pouch is made of a thicker acetate and it's shaped with a rim that will allow you to either apply it directly on top of a card and put the outline piece around the edge of the pouch. Or the second way is you can use it to cut a hole out of the card base and put the shaped piece through it and then apply the outline piece. You could then apply some foam tape to the underside to make it all level, but I opted to go with the first way since I already had all of my pieces glued down to my card base. So I did have to trim that, uh, that shaker pouch a little bit because it was a little bit wider than the outline piece that I had. I applied some 1 8 of an inch double sided adhesive on the bottom rim and before I attach it to the card I need to add my shaker bits. Now this is the freshly picked strawberry mix. It has two different sized strawberry clay pieces in it along with some light blue, light green, white, clear, and gold sequins and bits. And just like before I'm trying to pick out one of everything since my shaker window is so small but I am leaving out the gold ball piece since that pouch isn't quite tall enough for it to move around in there freely. And then I placed the pouch on top and I glued down the outline piece on the, the rim. Now for the leaf that needs to go on top of the strawberry, I didn't have a die for this. I just freehanded it on this piece of scrap green pattern paper and I'm just cutting it out with my Fiskars spring assist scissors. I really love these scissors. I have carpal tunnel. And sometimes it hurts if I'm doing a lot of cutting with regular scissors, but these are great because I can just move the paper around. I can move it around the blade without having to put too much pressure on my hands. So anyway, to make the leaf stand out a little more once I had it cut out, I didn't want it to blend into the green that's on that scalloped circle. So I outlined the leaf with a green Copic marker. And then I just glued that on top of the shaker pouch. And then to finish off this card, I took a few of the clear pieces of flat sequins from the sequin mix to add to the bottom left corner of the scallop circle for some embellishments. And then after looking at the card, I wanted those teal strips to stand out a little more. So I decided to use some teal sway peel off stickers from Love From Lizzie. And I used those to outline those teal strips. And this pretty this finishes card number two. For my third card, I'm using the watermelon shaped card kit from Queen and Company and this watermelon pattern paper. This kit comes with outline pieces for the inside part of the watermelon and also for the rind. And it has these great melon themed stamps. And today I'm using the one that says thanks a melon. You can't have too many thank you cards in my opinion. But the kit also comes with a few shaped card bases, but you can use the outline die that comes in the kit to make more once you run out. It also has these pre-cut acetate pieces and the foam pieces as well. So I cut the outline piece for the inner part of the watermelon out of that same dark pink pattern paper that I used for the strawberry card. But this time I used 12 by 12 paper and I cut the outline piece for the rind out of the green paper. I carefully placed the shape foam on the card base, trying to get it straight. And then I glued the inner watermelon print piece on the inside. And I cut this out using that uh, inner outline die, if that's not confusing enough for you. So now for the bits inside, I had several options. So I have these pink watermelon clay pieces and then these glossy black flat sequins that I thought I'd mix together, but I also have that one in a melon mix. But since my pattern paper is pink, I decided to go with the pink watermelon clay pieces 
and the glossy sequin pieces and I mixed those together. The pink and greens in the clay mix match my pattern paper better, I think. And so I added a little bit to the inside part and then I removed the adhesive backing from the top of the foam and I attached the acetate sheet on top. And then I glued down both of those outline pieces. Now this was a little tricky to try to get this on here straight, but if you get it crooked just a little bit, you can always use your scissors and trim off what's hanging over. But the reason I wanted to share this card with you using this kit is because as I was making it, the thought came to me that this would be pretty easy to duplicate making a watermelon shaped card using stacked circle dies. You wouldn't really need the dies in the kit. So you could use the different sizes to make the layers. The card base would be a circle and you would just score it in half. And then to make the outline pieces, you could cut the circle in half and use a smaller circle die to remove the inner part. Anyway, I'm going to give that a try for my next watermelon shaped shaker card. But for my sentiment, I cut out a small stitch rectangle that fit the stamp perfectly. And it says, thanks a melon. And this is card number three. Please let me know which of the three shaker cards is your favorite down in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to head on over to Instagram for the Summer Shaker Hop to enter the giveaway for a $25 gift certificate to This Calls for Confetti. You have through July 14th, 2022, and you can use the hashtag TCFC Summer Shakers to search in Instagram for all of the participants. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.